And he was able to carve that that way. And then more, to the, more amazing is that, that she has uh, a single tear coming out of her eye and he carved it and polished it so that it's shiny. It looks like you really think that there's water on this piece of sculpture. It's in the center of, of the first room you go into uh, in the Borghese Museum. Not sure what's next, but let's see and I'll know. <laughs> ah, now, how about this for contrast? None of this today, not in Rome. This is Piazza Navona, a major gathering spot in Rome for activity, for restaurants, for shops, and so on. And uh, there are three fountains in Piazza Navona, all three created by John Lorenzo Bernini. The most famous being the Fountain of Four Rivers, which is right here in the center of Piazza Navona. Piazza Navona is uh, an, an oval shape. Yeah, I guess that's the best way to describe it. Uh, it used to be a, a chariot racing area, so the, that's why it has this particular geometric shape. It is uh, the Fountain of Four Rivers is in front of uh, St. Agnese, which is uh, a wonderful architectural monument by another great Baroque artist, Borromini. It's easy to get Bernini and Borromini mixed up. Uh, history tells us that these two artists uh, could not get along. They were major rivals and therefore enemies. And, um, and so anyway, here we have Piazza Navona. Can't wait till you get there to see it. And by the way, how interesting, there are obelisks from ancient Egypt all over Rome. They were brought um, as gifts frequently, and a couple ones might have been pillaged, I'm not sure, but they, were, they, uh, they, they came all the way from Egypt to Rome, uh, which is no small feat. When they weighed tons and tons and tons, they obviously had to be, in large part, floated uh, on barges. Great place to have a great time. Next, here it is from above. These are uh, not a great slide for lots of reasons. Better of St. Agnese there, however. But here we have uh, Bernini's Fountain of the Moor uh, on this uh, far end. You know, I'm not really great at north, south, east, west, but it's one of those. <laughs> How about that? And down here, we have a Neptune Fountain, another Neptune Fountain, uh, different from the, the previous one that you saw. Um, this, the interior of this church, by the way, is absolutely spectacular. And if, if you're there and you go down, there's a little alleyway right down here. And if you walk two blocks, you get to uh, a wonderful little bar. It's called Botticella. And it is a Steeler bar. And a friend of mine, Giovanni, owns this bar. Or feels, I, hope, I hope he's still with us. Uh, and it's totally decorated with Steeler stuff. Um, floor to ceiling, whatever. Um, and also along, uh, there, there are several banners. There's a Bethany banner there, and there is a large sort of sign thing with lots of autographs from Bethanians and me. So next time you're there, pay a visit to Botticella. Um, don't go to Piazza Navona without also going there. And give him my regards. Next. Uh, we're now going to see some close-ups of the different uh, rivers. This is because we don't really know the origin of the Niles. Um, we have, that's why he has personified that river god as, you know, uh, not being able to, to see. We can go to the next one. There's a funny story about this one. I think this is the plate, the river plate. Um, if I have my rivers mixed up this morning, or this afternoon, or tonight, whenever you're watching this, um, my apologies. Um, I really need to get something to eat and, so, and something to drink right now, but, but we're going to finish this. It is said that Bernini sculpted this river god because he's facing Borromini's church, St. Agnese, uh, because he was afraid it was so poorly constructed that it was going to fall on its fountain. Again, these little tidbits of art history lore, I think make it interesting. You know, I take it with a, a large grain of something. 
gives you a much better idea of the uh, size of that incredible obelisk. If you took Art History 1, or when you take Art History 1, you'll get more into the hieroglyphic aspect of these particular things. River God, number three. Again, I'm not going to even... I will... Um, next time you see me, I'm going to add my rivers in the right order. I don't know right now. Uh, nothing more to say about this, except it truly is something to be uh, uh, seen both day and night. <coughs> I think I've probably talked about this enough, but I will point out, when, when, you're, when you're in major cities in Europe, you'll notice lots and lots of artists have their work out here. Um, take some time, uh, look through it, compliment them, buy something perhaps, support them. There's so many talented people that are trying and hopefully making a living like this. And just imagine, right now, that's not happening. That can't happen right now. And I hope soon, and very soon, it can, because these, these are really, really wonderfully talented artists and artisans. Probably went a little crazy on this. You should see some of my pictures I've taken over the years of the Fountain of Four Rivers. I've got some that I really love a lot. I don't brag about my stuff very often, but every once in a while, uh, there's one that I have that's got this amazing image through that hole. Uh, by the way, if you've ever read um, uh, Angels and Demons, you will uh, probably recognize a, uh, that's a book about. It's Dan Brown, and it's a book that involves Bernini and his sculptures, and there's a fight that takes place in that fountain of Four Rivers that's quite interesting. Um, it's really a, a book worth reading, uh, Page Turner, and I think a lot of it is, you know, based on fact, although I don't know for sure. All right, Bernini uh, designed the colonnade in the Vatican. You see just a piece of it here, you see it here. All these columns, uh, and the school of Bernini, he had a lot of assistants, and they created these life-size, well, larger than life-size uh, saints that, that go all around here and across the front. This is uh, St. Peter's Cathedral in the Vatican. The dome, as you should know, and I hope you do, was designed by, right, Michelangelo. Good job, Ray. Anyway, next, um, or, oh, I'm sorry. That was you, Alexis? Okay, good. Um, you've probably seen um, Easter services and such, and you won't this year, of course, um, with um, one of the popes, and the, my favorite, Francis right now, in this area up here. Now, uh, the papal apartment is, the window that he comes to bless people is right there. Again, there won't be people this year uh, for lots of reasons. I think to be doing this today on Monday, Thursday, and maybe to be watching it tomorrow on Good Friday and or over Easter weekend is interesting time, to say the least. We're needing to design these fountains. What I want to talk to you about right now are these, or is these, no, are these columns. Massive, gigantic, amazing. And uh, the exact number of them escapes me at the moment. But there are two bronze plaques on the ground in the Vatican Piazza. And if you stand on either of these bronze plaques, and you can turn all the way around and watch, and you only see one column. They are so geometrically, mathematically perfect. And how anybody was able to figure that out without computers and without technology at all is just stunning and amazing. Another thing that, uh, when I look at this today, I'm reminded that the last time that I was here, it was January, and it's typically, you know, in the 50s, 60s, but it was a really, really cold January, and these fountains were frozen and beautifully frozen, 
and I have some interesting memories and pictures of that. There are also lots of pigeons to feed, although it's not really a good idea. Obviously, uh, a view from up here. Um, you can walk out, which I've done many times, and be way up there. It's a pretty uh, a ordeal of a climb, especially for those of us with artificial knees, which I didn't always have. I used to be able to run up there. Not really, but anyway. And I highly recommend taking the time, paying the euros to climb to the top of St. Peter's to see Rome from that vantage point. It's spectacular. It's amazing. It's a must do as soon as you can. Nothing more to say about this. Nice woody. This is what you're going to see from up there. And, um, okay, back up just one second if we can. All right, you can see this colonnade, and what I didn't mention about it is, you know, it came much later, obviously, um, than Michelangelo's design, uh, or, or the architects of, um, of St. Peter's itself. But when it was designed, what it did was, it sort of created the space, and they're thought like arms that are bringing the people in into the space. So you can appreciate that, especially from this angle. And I had mentioned it before. That's why I wanted to jump back uh, for just a second. And the Roman Forum and ancient Rome is over here. And if you took Art History One, or when you take it, know that you've seen the Pantheon right there, uh, the most uh, intact uh, ancient building in all the world. It's amazing. Okay, now we can move forward. And Santa Maria uh, della Vittoria, St. Mary the Victory, um, this is St. Teresa in ecstasy. This one of Bernini's most celebrated and um, scandalized pieces of work. It certainly defines Baroque style. Look at all the stuff, all the different textures, all the different colors, all the different materials, um, all the action and activity, all the movement of this. Uh, as we see, now St. Teresa of Avila, Avila is in Spain, um, is known for having um, established an order of nuns. And they were the barefoot nuns. And uh, this is a moment when she was overcome with passion for God. And this angel came down and, uh, and put her into a state where she was in such ecstasy that she wanted him after uh, he put the golden arrow into her once, she wanted him to pull it out and put it back in and to pull it out and put it back in. And as a result of all that, this has become um, quite a conversation piece of sculpture, to say the least. There's also a stained glass window and real light coming in and all sorts of stuff. I think I have another slide here. Um, and you know, I better um, stop getting ahead of myself and stop talking so much because this is on page 343 and 344 in your book. Bam, I got it. And I'd already told you about the Baldacchino on 333. All right, good for me. Sometimes I'm a little more with it than sometimes I remember. All right, look at, look at the way he's crafted these folds of whatever, as she's floating here on this cloud. It's really very spectacular. It's in a small, small church that is beautifully decorated in Baroque fashion, Baroque style, and um, it's definitely worthy of your time next time you're there. Not sure why, I mean, this is a bad image, of course, I don't know, it looks like, a, again, like a newspaper thing, but look at the, just look at the emotion imparted in this space. So it's not just that it's carved out of marble, it's just that he can get that uh, through. And by the way, uh, if you have ever taken painting or if you're taking printmaking or whatever, and you're in that studio right over there, you might want to look up and you'll see, you'll see that. And you'll say, oh, I know who she is. And this is a self-portrait by, of course, Bernini. This um, is a, a beautiful bust of 
Beatrice. And it's uh, something that, mm, it's at the Bargello Museum in uh, Florence. And Beatrice was someone that Bernini loved. And he found out that she was being unfaithful to him and uh, paid someone to, she was very beautiful. She, he paid someone to um, go to her home and take a razor and slash her face off. And um, she ended up being in a, a mental hospital and dying a terrible death. Again, there are these, I didn't know that for a very long time, and probably I should have kept it to myself today because really, I love his work so much, and yet, how could anybody do such a terrible thing? How could they make such beautiful things and then, <sighs> Okay, so you've just seen some Baroque masterpieces by Caravaggio and Gian Lorenzo Bernini. I'm not sure how often I'll be doing this, but I'll be letting you know by email. If in the meantime you can just give me a, a little review on how this might be working or not for you, what I could do to make it more interesting, better, um, easier to watch or listen to. I mean, this is my voice, this is my face, there's not much I can do about that. Um, and of course, if I were um, not being appropriate, I would have a mask on, but I didn't think that this was going to be... I have my mask, it's right over there, by the way, just so you know. I'm being a good boy, not to worry. All of you be good people, all right? Protect yourself and uh, each other, and uh, so that we can see each other again. Let's look forward to that.